Grade 6 math number 3.1a. Convert fractions and decimals. And I'll tell you about non-terminating decimals. A mixed number is a number that has a whole number, bigger than zero, and a fraction, like one and a half. The one is the whole number and the half is the fraction. A terminating decimal stops. It has an end to it. A non-terminating decimal, or it's called a repeating decimal by the kids in the lower grades, it has one or more digits that keeps repeating endlessly. It never terminates. It never ends. Sometimes we need to change a decimal into a fraction, and when we use place value charts, we can see how easy it is to see the fractions. A 1 and a 7, written like this in the place value chart, is 17 hundredths. We can see the denominator is hundredths. We can see this is 4 tenths, and we can write it as 4 over 10, or that this is a 1 and 5 tenths. Each place value column tells us what the denominator should be. But fractions have many different denominators, an eighth, a thirteenth, a twenty-seventh, and we'll get to those. To change one and twenty-five hundredths to a fraction, we do the same thing. We know that it's twenty-five hundredths, so we put the twenty-five over a hundred, but it needs to be reduced to its lowest terms. We need to find the greatest number that they have in common as a factor, or their greatest common factor. So what do the 25 and the 100 have in common? Well, they share a 1, a 5, and a 25 as common factors. Which one of these is the greatest? The 25 is. So we divide the 25 by 25 and get 1, and we divide the 100 by 25 and get 4. So 1 and 25 hundredths, in its lowest terms, is 1 and 1 fourth. We can change that fraction to a decimal. And I'll use the 25 hundredths as our example. What we do is we use the denominator as the divisor, and we put this big, huge denominator into that little numerator. See? We could even do it with the 4 and the 1. To fit the 100 into the 25, we add a decimal point and some zeros. 100 can't fit into 25, but it could fit into 250 two times, and that equals 200, and when we do our subtraction, we get 50, so we add another zero, because we want it to be even. 100 goes into 500 five times, so 25 one hundredths is 0.25, see? Let's try it with, with 3 eighths. We're going to make the denominator the divisor, so we're going to get the 8 and put it into the 3. And it won't fit, so we have to add a decimal point and a zero. See? 8 goes into 33 times, it's 24. We do subtraction, we get 6. We add another zero. 8 times 7 is 56. So we do our subtraction and get 4. And so we add another zero. 8 times 5 is 40, it comes out even. So we know that 3 eighths is equal to 0.375 or 375 thousandths as a decimal. And it is a terminating decimal because it ended after the 5. We were all done. See? But if we did 2 thirds, what would happen is we would add the decimal point in the 0 and it would go in 6 times to be 18 and we'd subtract it and get a 2, add another 0, it would go in 6 times, that would be 18, we'd subtract it, get a 2 and add another 0 and it would just keep doing it and doing it and repeating over and over and over again. That's a non-terminating decimal where the 20 just keeps showing up, so we just stop before it makes us divide forever. So we know that 2 thirds is equal to 0 0.6666666. Well, what we do is we can use three dots called an ellipsis and just do point dots, or we can say that it's 0 0.6 and we put a bar over the top of it indicating that the 6 is going to repeat. See? If it was one-thirds, it's going to do the exact same thing. But instead of being a 20 that keeps repeating with a 6 in the quotient, it's a 10 that keeps repeating and a 3 in the quotient. Because a third is half of two-thirds, it does everything it does exactly half. 3 is half a 6, and 10 is half a 20, so it just keeps repeating. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So what we do is we put a, a decimal point, a 3, and we put a bar over the number that repeats. If we had a number like... 0.1762 We know the 6.2 is repeating, so we just put the bar over that, and we don't write the rest of it. 
And we don't put a bar over the 1 7 because it didn't repeat. See? So we could have five repeating numbers and have to put the bar over all five of them. All right? So this is the first video. I'm going to make a second one because I don't want this one to get too long. And I'm going to talk more about converting fractions and decimals. If you think you've got it, then go ahead and move on to 3.2. If you think you'd like to listen a little bit more and learn a little bit more about converting them, then I'll see you at the next video. Bye.